good morning everyone uh, welcome you all to global online university channel and here we are with our ugc nta net paper on preparation on the topic research aptitude uh, this global online university has came up with revision lectures as well as mcqs which will go on uh, every day at 8 am in the morning and 8 pm in the evening apart from, that is this things till will go on till the time of examinations are scheduled apart from this we also have a complete course for paper 1 which consists of 60 full syllabus test 60 full uh, sorry full syllabus notes video lectures and we have uh, the facility at global online university that is you can download an application of global online university we have our paid whatsapp group the contact details are reflecting on the screen and the fees for same is triple line at the same time we have started with our new whatsapp group from 12th of april so uh, the students or aspirants who are uh, really keen about the same or preparation you can get in touch with the given number so let's start with the concept for the day now today we are going to discuss on the concept that is primary uh, sources secondary sources and tertiary sources there were two questions in the recent uh, papers based on this particular topic now when we talk about primary sources that is called as the first hand sources when we talk about secondary sources that is you know that is a value addition for the primary sources so when i talk about primary sources it's an original record it's an original event it's a discovery or an evidence okay without any inter interpretation or without any uh, you know uh, information without sorry without uh, which the research won't happen or this type of information is the information which is done for the first time okay maybe the collection of data like for example the census 2021 so this information is nothing but it is what you know a primary source but when this information gets live on the government websites then we can take that information to study maybe certain research work on that so that information becomes what it becomes a secondary source a secondary data so when i talk about primary sources like research based journal articles okay dissertations thesis okay which we use in conferences symposium symposium or like government reports photographs speeches uh, diaries personal narratives correspondence all this becomes what this becomes an example of primary data primary sources whereas when we come to secondary sources as i said it's in value addition okay it can be restated interpreted summarized review or analyzed as a primary source examples of secondary sources can be in the form of books journals articles that interpret or review research work research work which is already done okay Hist histories biographies criticisms which are done and they are been noted somewhere and when we use the same thing it becomes what it becomes a secondary source it becomes a secondary data now this is what this was our primary and secondary when we come to tertiary sources it is nothing but it's a combination of primary plus secondary now like for example here like only catalog list index organize uh, uh, compile abstract summarize or digest other sources and usually do not they do not give credit to any author a textbook or a reference material becomes seer please try to understand this the example a textbook or a reference material becomes a tertiary source when it only repackages the ideas or information which is already presented which already presented so in in the such case the examples like dictionaries and like encyclopedias which can be a secondary resource to okay wikipedia directories guidebooks handbooks okay manuals indexes all this become a examples or a part of what it becomes a part of tertiary sources okay so 
sources which has divided into two uh, sorry which are divided into basically three part primary the first hand secondary the value added and tertiary the combination okay so these are the three uh, types of sources which we have learned coming to next is hypothesis now first of all understand what's the purpose of hypothesis hypothesis is basically uh, to define and to define in an experiment the relationship between the independent variable okay which can be controlled or manipulated and the dependent variable so it is independent variable okay and the dependent variable which is you know a measurable outcome affected by the former that is by the independent variable so we have the relationship between independent and dependent variable the independent variable which is controlled or manipulated the dependent variable which is the outcome measurable outcome so the relation between this two becomes is nothing but you know the purpose of hypothesis and which is conducted to to come to do an experiment now here let us go quickly to the characteristics of hypothesis it should be simple enough to understand it should be uh, conceptually it should be clear okay it should be very very specific there should be no ambiguity that is there should be no confusion or dual meaning it should be relevant it should be related or it should be oriented to the theory which is which is taken which is a part of your know research then it should be manageable and achievable we frame the hypothesis in order to achieve the hypothesis the statement should not be format normative it should be empirical real life examples it should be testable okay um it should be one which can be which can predict the outcome it should have various techniques to test observe and measure it should have uh, it should be general okay it should uh, it should be able to explain the whole phenomena okay so these are the things basic things which we have to take care when we are framing the hypothesis okay now coming next is uh, the basic two there are many types of hypothesis but basically two types of hypothesis that is the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis okay which is denoted h o which is denoted by what as a null hypothesis h1 is denoted as an alternative hypothesis so null null hypothesis where there it states that there is no relation between the variables there is no maybe it is lacking the information or you know any such um, type of statistical information is not available so this does not prove any relation like for example there is no significant change in the performance of students when they are given remedial coaching there is no significant change no so there is no relationship okay on the other hand i'll i'll alternate hypothesis is to disprove the null hypothesis so here the null, null hypothesis can be a children's performance improve when the remedial coaching is provided to them so h o it there it states the no relationship whereas h1 states that there is you know there is it disproves the uh, null hypothesis so today if we summarize we have done uh, three topics one was you know uh, the resource type that is the sources primary sources secondary sources and the tertiary sources then we went to what is hypothesis what are the characteristics of hypothesis and last one we came to what is null hypothesis and what is alternative hypothesis okay so in the coming lecture we'll be taking with a new fresh topic and as i said earlier that once this topics are over we'll come back with all the mcqs of research but at the same time it is very important that you know certain part of the theory so keep a uh, uh, please do, uh, do Uh, refer to this video because when we come with mcqs the mcqs are out of these questions any any aspirants those who have missed earlier videos can go back to the channel and in the list you can just refer to the videos and ensure that your theory conceptual part is very clear that's all for the day we'll be back with tomorrow's topic uh, uh, tomorrow with a new research topic thank you everyone